All right, welcome back to the Stan Simpson Show. The topic today, how can Connecticut create more jobs? So, again, here's the issue that I find fascinating. The banks are sitting on a trillion dollars, not lending it out. The corporations are sitting on a trillion dollars and not borrowing. So do we have a recession, or is this simply a confidence problem? Former banker Oz Grable, how do you get these banks to come off that money? They're loaning money, they aren't loaning it. Well, I think there are, there are a number of issues floating around out there. I'll defer to Jerry, who's on the board of one of our community banks. I mean, the, the, the Dodd-Frank bill does have implications. You cannot deny the, 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 what's going to happen. I think the, the idea... We need what kind of, what you say, for well, a lady, Dodd-Frank what? compliance issues around small banks, and I'll let Jerry... But okay. It is an issue. You can't take your eye off of that. We, we, we want to keep the community banks. They are the lifeblood of the small business areas. Yet we need our mega banks, the Bank of America. They do play an important role on those things. I'll just go off to one quick tangent on the okay. jobs. Connecticut doesn't exist in a vacuum. We're affected by the global economy, and we're affected at what goes on in Washington. One of the reasons I think people are sitting on cash, the businesses, not so much the banks, is I don't think people know exactly where we're going long term on some of our structural deficits. And one of the big disappointments in the Obama administration to me was when he walked away from the Bowles Simpson recommendations. He created that commission. There's a combination of tax increases. For those not familiar, with that commission was there to do what? They were there to, to, to he was appointed, appointed by the, the, the president to look at the long term structural deficits that we have in this country. Around me, Medicare, around Social Security, around fighting two wars, uh, two front wars with no tax increases, around lack of infrastructure, how we're going to get at that. And I think what you're seeing, you said lack of confidence. I, I, I mean, consumer confidence is one thing, but I think the business community is trying to figure out okay, well, what is going to happen? Look at, look at our lack of investment in our infrastructure in the state of Connecticut. I think the governor is making a huge step forward on. Uh, Looking at rail, he's prepared, he said, to, to leverage the full billion dollars of, of, of bonding capacity that the state has. But we, we've, we've put our heads in the sand over the last decade as a country. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you're seeing in part is do I put my next dollar in this country or state or do I hold on to it to see what plays out over the next two years? So how do you change it? Because the reality is you have the debt and it's not going anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. So meanwhile, you have this issue with jobs. Jerry, how do you change that dynamic? The, the, the debt's not going anywhere. Right. The dynamic's not going to change right now. It's not going anywhere. But to kind of piggyback on one of Oz's points and confidence. We don't have a lot of confidence in our world economy right now. One of the things I'm really concerned about now is what is the health care bill going to do for my business? I just don't know. Now, is you that know, the elephant in the room? Here? Is that's that, a, that's, a, that's hearing, one right, elephant. What I'm hearing too from people is that they're, they're not confident with the health care from a business standpoint. They don't like it. And so therefore they're holding back, hoping that it will change or that there'll be a new president who will rescind that and they can investigate. How much is that? Is that an under? Well, I'm not sure. Aspect? I'm not saying that I don't like it. Right. I just don't understand it from a business standpoint. From a business standpoint. And I don't know how much is going to impact my business. Right. I read in the paper all the time that some companies are raising their employees' rates, you know, in order to keep their profit margins at one level. And that's, one, bets, right? that's one way to do it. But is that the best way to do it? I'm not really sure. And I'm not sure how that elephant in the room is going to impact my business. So has the president then dropped the ball on the inability to recognize, as you said, from a business standpoint, he passed his health care bill. It was flawed. I think he would concede it was flawed. Is he ignoring the fact that there are people who are hedging their bets, holding off because they're not sure they're not how sure. Well. So what do you do? Don't you bring those guys together and say, okay, I mean, this is I think that's, that's the whole political piece of that. And that's a piece that, you know, as a, as a small business guy, I'm not a part of that conversation. Right. Yeah, I'd like to be a should you be? I should be. Ms. Cochran, you have your... Oh, I, I, I absolutely agree. It's a situation that it, there's almost no good answer. There's, all, there's a, a wait-and-see type attitude. There is such an atmosphere of, of fear. Um, we were, were talking a few minutes ago even about hiring. You know, businesses have found that the employees that haven't been downsized are so intent on keeping their positions, they're doing more. So you're showing businesses that are doing more with less. The people are doing the work. And so there's a sense of why do we need to do anything any different? Why do we need to hire any more people when our work is getting done? We save even more money. So I, I, I just feel like that the, the atmosphere is um, it's, it's so contaminated at this particular it's time. But I'm right? not sure. It's mm-hmm. contentious. It's contaminated. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, I, I honestly don't know that. Um, I don't think we have 
an atmosphere that's even conducive we to allowing... We being the country. We being the country. Okay, because two things Connecticut I see... Connecticut is a microcosm right. of the, the but country. But in Connecticut, you have a, a governor who controls the House and the Senate, so he can... He runs the table. Absolutely. Naturally, you have a president who has one party, yes. uh, you know, one chamber, and doesn't have the other. So he has to play yes. ball differently. Of in course. fact, uh, the governor is now saying, and Republicans, that they're working together here in Connecticut. In fact, they had a big meeting just last week saying that they're all on the same page, which is rare to hear. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what the governor had to say about this bipartisan effort to create jobs in Connecticut. I can literally guarantee um, that as a result of this session, Connecticut will be in a better place to compete for the jobs that are created. Our hope is that this will be one package, one package that sends a message to the business community of this state and the world that uh, we are together on this issue about creating jobs and making Connecticut more business friendly. Republican leader Larry Cafaro, so they're on the same page now. Let's talk about that because at the end of the day, it takes both these parties coming together and making this happen. Connecticut, they seem to be on the same page, at least for now, because the Republicans had criticized the governor earlier for not talking to him. Apparently, he is now the president. We know what's happening down in Washington, D.C. So to what degree does this political posturing get in the way of making good policy? And how do you change that? You're at, what are you I'll, I'll, I'll take, hey, the guy ran for governor, I'll start with you. Well, I think, the gov I think the, you know, there's a difference. With, first of all, the contentiousness back in the, in the session was about the budget. Right. Um, you, there, just be, I think there's... Well, even now with, 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 with the jobs bill. But unanimous, there's unanimous agreement, I think, about creating jobs. I don't think anybody's saying that the most important thing we need to do as a state... We haven't created jobs in the state for 30 years. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't had any increase in population. We, we're, an, we're an aging uh, workforce, an aging population. We've got to change that to make this a place where younger people... Uh, want to come, they want to grow, they want to start a business, they want to start their career, they want a mid-career change. So I think, I don't think it's anybody who disagrees with that. The disagreements are going to be, how do you do it? Uh, and that's always going to be, but that fight's worth having. I, I don't think you have any, and I, I think there's a, not, we've now moved from the budget, the governor got the budget passed, and he got the union votes that he needed. You know, that's water over the dam at this point. Now, what do we do going forward? And I think there will be probably unanimity around certain aspects of that job package. I mean, there's compromise too, right? In election year, in 15 seconds, you have the president uh, you know, gearing up to run again, to what degree, you know you have only a, a short window to get this thing passed before election politics can takes over. Ten seconds, um, are, are we doomed, so to speak? With the yeah, specter no, of the I never, 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 never was talking about any of our models. We're not doomed. I mean, there's still a lot of intelligence. If we morning. think we're doomed, right. then we really we're are. Doomed. I don't we think are. we're doomed. We're, we're going to get up in the morning and things will be fine. You guys are optimistic. That's good. <laughs> Very optimistic. See, this, op this show is about being optimistic. I like to see that. That's why you guys are here. That's right. All right. We're going to have more optimism when we come back with more of the Stan Simpson Show. We'll talk more about jobs and get their advice. What will they tell the governor if he came and talked to them? How would they create jobs? What two bullet points would they give to the governor? Don't even think about going away. Catch the show 24-7 at ctnow.com slash Stan. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, too.